Collapsible A. On May 13, 1912, crewmen on the ocean liner RMS Oceanic spotted something unexpected, a vague shape bobbing through the waves of the North Atlantic. A cutter was launched to investigate. As the floating shape was towed closer to the Oceanic, the crew and passengers' curiosity turned to revulsion. It was a lifeboat containing three corpses and a mysterious wedding ring. Documents found on one of the bodies identified him as Thomas Beatty. Based on their clothing, the other two seemed to be stokers, ship crewmen designated to fuel the furnaces of engine boilers. The ring found in the lifeboat bore the inscription Edward to Gerda. The passengers and crew of the Oceanic were baffled. How did a lifeboat holding three dead bodies end up in the middle of the ocean, and why was a wedding ring placed inside? A month earlier, and 200 miles away, the RMS Titanic had sunk after striking an iceberg. As the ship descended beneath the waves, a handful of people scrambled for the last remaining lifeboat, Collapsible A. This Engelhart-style lifeboat, made of kapok and cork, was a raft with heavy canvas sides that could be collapsed for storage and raised to form a boat in an emergency. Still wearing his dinner jacket, first-class passenger Thomas Beatty navigated the rapidly sloping deck and managed to crawl onto the barely assembled lifeboat. He was soon joined by roughly 20 others. Collapsible A, unable to be launched, sat on the deck of the Titanic, with its passengers awaiting the inevitable approach of the rising water. As the waves reached the boat, three final passengers slid down the deck of the doomed ship in a last desperate bid for survival. August Vennerstrom and Edward and Gerda Lindell slammed into the lifeboat, grasping desperately at its sides. Only August and Edward had the strength to climb on. Gerda slipped beneath the icy waves, adding her life to the disaster's devastating body count. Separated from the other boats which had moved away from the sinking ship, the survivors in Collapsible A slowly succumbed to exposure. To lighten the load on the partially swamped boat, the bodies of those who perished were thrown over the side. Edward's grief from losing his wife sapped his will to live, and he died early in the night. Her wedding ring, which he had gripped in his hand, fell into the bottom of the boat as his body was given to the waves. As the sun rose the following morning, the dozen remaining survivors were rescued by Collapsible D, all except Thomas Beatty and two unknown stokers. They had perished shortly before the other lifeboat had arrived. Their bodies, along with Gerda's ring, remained floating on the boat for a month until they were discovered by the Oceanic, a final reminder of the horrors that faced the unfortunate souls aboard the Titanic on that fateful night. Mystery Lights In the pitch-black hours of April 14th and 15th, 1912, as the Titanic's passengers huddled in lifeboats or slowly froze in the frigid North Atlantic, many saw what they believed was their salvation, ship lights on the horizon. Roughly five miles away, the lights seemed to indicate that another vessel had responded to the Titanic's distress calls and was speeding towards the desperate survivors. But no help arrived. Over a thousand people drowned or froze to death before the ship Carpathia finally arrived at 4 a.m., nearly two hours after the Titanic sank. Were these lights real, or were they hopeful hallucinations born from desperation? Titanic officers were so certain of what they saw that the mysterious lights were logged in the official investigation of the sinking. Did another ship ignore the Titanic's plight, leaving over a thousand people to die? If the lights were indeed real, they could have belonged to three possible ships. One, the Samson, was suspected as early as 1912. In 1962, a BBC special on the 50th anniversary of the sinking revealed that Henrik Nace, first officer of the Samson, had confessed on his deathbed that the crew of the Samson had failed to aid the Titanic. Though the ship lacked a wireless radio, Nace claimed that the Samson's crew had seen the flares launched by the Titanic on the horizon, as well as its mast lights. He alleged that his ship, carrying thousands of pounds of illegally hunted seal meat, had avoided the Titanic out of fear of discovery by the authorities. This confession seemed to support claims by crewmen from the SS Californian, another ship that failed to help, who reported seeing a ship headed toward the Titanic. However, official port records in Iceland indicated the Samson was docked at the time, and no other crew members corroborated Nace's story. Another candidate for the mystery lights is the SS Mount Temple. Unlike the Samson, the Mount Temple had a wireless radio and received the SOS call sent out by the Titanic's radio operator shortly after midnight. Understanding the severity of the situation, Mount Temple's radio operator, John Durant, kept his radio silent until he received precise rescue coordinates from the Titanic. 
Though ordered to halt their voyage due to the danger of icebergs, Captain James Henry Moore sped toward the beleaguered ship as quickly as his aging vessel allowed. Despite his best efforts, Moore was forced to halt because of the sheer number of icebergs between his ship and the Titanic's last known location. The Mount Temple could only watch as rockets from the Carpathia indicated their response to the sinking. In the morning, once the ice cleared, the Mount Temple searched for survivors, but found no signs of the sinking at the coordinates they had received. As they left the area, the men of the Mount Temple saw one of the most infamous ships involved with the Titanic disaster, the SS Californian. The Samson had no radio and was possibly not even in the area. The Mount Temple was far away and blocked by ice. The SS Californian, on the other hand, was so close to the sinking that crew members later reported seeing the lights of a large steamship on the horizon, including deck lights and mast lights, suggesting something was amiss. The crew continued to watch as the then unidentified ship fired rockets and even saw the final death gasp of the Titanic as the encroaching water destroyed the electrical system and extinguished the lights. The captain of the SS Californian, Stanley Lord, ordered the crew to signal the vessel with a Morse code lamp, but did not attempt to radio the ship to investigate further. The radio operator had angrily turned off the radio after being rebuffed by the Titanic's operator before the sinking. Around sunrise, the Californian left the ice field and only then provided assistance when the Carpathia demanded they help search for survivors. The inaction of the men aboard the most likely candidate for the mystery lights, the SS Californian, may have sentenced hundreds of people to die in the icy waters around the Titanic. The Iceberg Photograph Is this a photograph of the most infamous iceberg in human history? More than a century has passed since the Titanic sank, yet its story continues to captivate and provoke analysis. The disaster is often examined through the lens of human elements, the determination of the survivors, the misjudgments of Bruce Ismay and Captain Smith, and the aforementioned inaction of the SS Californian. However, the human drama is but one aspect of this tragic tale. At its core, the Titanic story is an age-old saga of man versus nature, iron and coal against an unyielding chunk of ice ominously drifting in the North Atlantic. Nature, in this instance, emerged victorious, claiming over 1,500 lives in a chilling display of power. This leads to an intriguing question. What became of the iceberg that sank the Titanic? Despite the improbability of capturing a specific iceberg on film in an era before GPS, a handful of photographs claimed to have done just that. One such photograph was taken by 22-year-old Lawrence Studemeyer, a passenger on the Carpathia, the ship that rescued the Titanic's survivors. About six hours after the Titanic struck the iceberg, Studemeyer snapped a picture of a massive iceberg with a conspicuous chunk missing from its front. While impressively sized and roughly in the right location, Studemeyer's iceberg does not match the descriptions of Titanic survivors. A more accurate physical match is an iceberg captured by Stefan Rohorik. Traveling to America from Germany, Rohorik's steamer passed through a field of debris a few days after the sinking, and he photographed a nearby iceberg. Unbeknownst to him, this iceberg closely resembled the one described by Titanic survivor and crew member Joseph Skerritt, who noted that it, quote, resembled the Rock of Gibraltar, only very much smaller. Yet, though Rohorik's iceberg was a physical match, it bore no visible signs of a collision with the Titanic. That distinction belongs to an iceberg photographed by the chief steward of the German ship SS Prince Adelbert, which sailed near the wreckage site the day after the sinking. The black and white photo of the iceberg features a significant clue a streak of red paint along its base, the same color used in the Titanic's hull. The timing, location, and paint combine to make this iceberg the most likely candidate for the one that doomed the Titanic. Regardless of photographic evidence, experts agree that the iceberg must have been enormous when it broke off the Greenland ice shelf in 1910 or 11 and drifted into warmer waters. By the time the Titanic struck it, the iceberg had likely shrunk significantly and would have fully melted by the end of 1912. The most infamous iceberg in history vanished without a trace, a fitting metaphor for the fleeting encounter that claimed over 1,500 lives and etched itself into our collective memory. The Hidden Photo Does this hidden photo capture the true cause of the Titanic sinking? When examined closely, the tragedy of the RMS Titanic feels like a litany of human blunders. Disregarded iceberg warnings, reckless speed through dangerous waters, and a lack of emergency preparedness culminated in one of the worst maritime disasters in history. But what if the greatest blunder of all had been concealed for over a century? What if the Titanic had set sail across the Atlantic 
already crippled by a severe injury, one inflicted before it even left the docks. Irish journalist Shannon Maloney stumbled upon a startling discovery while investigating a cache of photos hidden in an attic for decades. He noticed an anomaly on the Titanic, a large black mark on the starboard side, the same side that struck the iceberg on that fateful April night. Delving deeper, Maloney unearthed evidence suggesting that the doomed ship may have been fatally compromised by a massive internal problem, a coal fire that burned for days. Maloney discovered that the few surviving stokers and firemen had almost immediately claimed that the ship sank because of a coal fire that had ignited in one of the coal bunkers shortly before the ship departed for New York. The Titanic's coal supply was placed right against the hull, a standard practice at the time. However, the ship's unprecedented size rendered its coal bunkers over 30 feet tall, and manually shoveling coal was not sufficient to quell an accidental fire. A coal fire would explain several peculiar aspects of the Titanic's journey. Despite White Star Line's official policy prohibiting speeds over 20 knots, the Titanic traveled at 23 knots. Furthermore, sonar images of the wreck show the iceberg punctured the ship in several places with nearly identical severity, suggesting structural weakness. The excess coal being shoveled away from the blaze could explain the increased speed, and the hull's warping from an ongoing inferno could account for the multiple punctures instead of a single gash. But why was this crucial claim ignored if the Stokers testified about a coal fire throughout the voyage? According to Maloney, the answer lies in British pride. The Titanic was hailed as the future of British passenger liners, a symbol of national prowess amidst stiff global competition. Admitting to a coal fire would mean acknowledging a potentially fatal oversight, a glaring human error that doomed the pinnacle of British naval engineering. Maloney even discovered evidence suggesting that the judge presiding over the 1912 British inquiry into the sinking had financial interests in shipping companies and intentionally downplayed the coal fire claims. If Maloney's theory holds, the burden of the Titanic tragedy shifts almost entirely to human folly and ambition, casting a new and somber light on a century-old disaster. The Lost Telegram In the days and weeks following the tragic sinking of the Titanic, Philip Franklin, owner of the White Star Line, which operated the ship, stood before a U.S. congressional panel. With an air of solemnity, he testified that he did not know of the Titanic's demise until the survivors reached New York. He swore no telegram had been received, and that any decisions made by the company were based on the belated knowledge of the liner's fate. However, in 1988, a document surfaced that cast a long shadow of doubt over Franklin's claims. Decades after the icy Atlantic swallowed the Titanic, an envelope emerged containing a piece of paper that would reignite a century-old controversy. This paper was a telegram sent from the Titanic to the White Star Line headquarters, urgently informing them that the ship was sinking and the situation was dire. After scrutinizing the printing style, official markings, and the paper used, experts confirmed the telegram's legitimacy. It was indeed an official White Star Line communication from 1912. The mere existence of this telegram doesn't alter the tragic outcome of the disaster, but it does cast a critical eye on the veracity of Franklin's testimony. The crucial question remains, did Franklin receive the telegram? If he did, should his actions in the aftermath of the disaster have been examined more closely? Why would he have lied to Congress, knowing he could do nothing to alter the ship's doomed fate? Alternatively, if he did not receive it, was it withheld from him deliberately? The discovery of this lost telegram adds yet another layer of intrigue to the Titanic's already enigmatic legacy. Whether or not the answers to these questions would have significantly changed the aftermath is uncertain. Yet, this revelation deepens the mystery surrounding the most infamous maritime disaster in history, challenging us to reconsider what we thought we knew about the fateful night the Titanic met its end. If you could solve one mystery about the Titanic's sinking, which would it be? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you for watching Dark Five. Like and subscribe to continue exploring the greatest mysteries of this world and beyond.